That was so good. Um, so good. So good. Oh, it wouldn't be a Christmas service, would it, without kids doing something cute? And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to speak about peace. And I don't very, feel very peaceful. I'm going to wreck inside after that. So let's just compose myself a moment. Thank God for the children. So I'll do, I want to talk about peace for a moment. When we was kind of deciding what the theme of our Christmas service would be this year, you know, the verse that Pastor Tony read out where the angels came and said, peace and favour to all men, was the one that really stuck out to me. You know, we're living in a world that really needs peace, aren't we? You know, I mean, we can look around now and think particularly that it's very unpeace-like. But it's always been this way, hasn't it? And the thing is, although we might feel like the last few years have been turmoil, I mean, even for us here in the UK, we've been through been through Brexit, that's a bit tumultuous, wasn't it? And then we've been through like a housing crisis, and that was a bit tumultuous. And then we've had COVID, and now we've got all these other things going on, cost of living crises. Like, it's very easy for people to lose their peace. Yeah. But for some people, the turmoil never goes away. Mm. It's with you, wherever you go, whatever country you might find yourself in, whatever location that you're stood in or sat, there's something on the inside that's stealing your peace. Yeah. But before we get into that, it sounds quite heavy, doesn't it? We're going to lighten the mood a little bit. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, for those of you that are that part of church, you you know what's coming. For those of you that haven't been here, then you're welcome. <laughs> this is my Christmas gift to you. <laughs> so there's a 90 year old man and he goes for a physical at the doctor's and they check him all out and stuff and all of the tests come back normal. And the doctor says, Larry, everything looks great. How are you doing mentally and emotionally? Like, are you at peace with God? And Larry replies, God and I, we're like, we're tight, doctor. He knows that I've got poor eyesight, so he's fixed it. So that whenever I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, poof, the light comes on. Don't even have to do anything. And then when I go out the door, the light just turns off. Don't have to go searching for it. Wow, says the dog. That's amazing. You and God must be like, you must have a relationship that's so good. A little bit later, Larry's wife goes to the doctor. And she goes and has her own physical, but the doctor turns to her and says, Mabel, it seems to me that Larry and, and his God are like really tight. He said that whenever he goes to the bathroom, the light comes on. And whenever he leaves, he goes out again. And he goes, oh no, he's weeing in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So. <laughs> Earlier on, we read the passage, didn't we, out of Luke? Pastor Tony read the passage about when the shepherds came and visit, were visited by the angels. And, you know, it's a real poignant moment in the whole nativity story for many reasons. I'm just going to recap the couple of verses that I want to highlight. So Luke 2, 13 and 14 say that suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Peace on whom his favour rests. Surely it's peace and goodwill to all men, right? That's what we sing in the carols. But it says, peace and favour to on whom he rests. Like... Who are these people? I mean, the context of the story is the angels come to shepherds. Now, shepherds, these shepherds were special shepherds, but shepherds, particularly in that time, they had a menial sort of job, didn't they? You know, it was fairly run of the mill. You didn't have to go to university to be a shepherd, right? You could just get up, take over the family business, and do some shepherding. Shepherds have got like a real sort of thing in the Bible. You might have noticed if you read through your Bible, there's plenty of shepherds, like Abraham was a shepherd, right? And Isaac was a shepherd, and many others. Zechariah was a shepherd. And of course, we know that Jesus is the good shepherd. Not that the others were bad, particularly, you know, but 
David did leave his flock, didn't he, to go and fight on the front lines. So make of that what you will. But there are shepherds all through the biblical story. But it is a very menial job. And they were, they were looked upon quite lowly. Kind of, well, can't get another job, might as well be a shepherd. Sort of attitude. But like I said, these shepherds were special shepherds. These shepherds were looking after the flocks outside of Bethlehem. Now, I don't know if you know, but the flocks outside of Bethlehem were particularly special sheep. Right? These were high-end, go to your local butcher's type of sheep, not your go to Tesco's and get cut a lamb out of the freezer sort of sheep. These sheep were the sheep that were bred specifically for temple sacrifices. Because temple sacrifices required that sheep would be without spot or blemish, right? So any sheep in these flocks, the shepherds had to keep a close eye on them, get rid of those without spots and blemishes. So they were special shepherds. And the angels come to them outside of Bethlehem and say this thing, and one angel is scary enough. We read that all through the Bible. When an angel comes to speak to someone, they're afraid. And we know that because every time an angel comes to speak to someone in the Bible, the angel says, do not be afraid. Yeah. Right? It must be clear on their faces. Like, what's your best terrified face? Come on, give us your best terrified face. Bit of acting class, go on. Like, three of you went to acting school, the rest of you, I'm afraid you, you failed. You're going to have to be shepherds. So, this is what's going on, right? A multitude of angels then turn up. Now, come on, you can do better than your best do not be afraid face. There's a multitude of them. What would you look like if a multitude of angels turned up? Oh my goodness, no, he's, I gave you another chance, it's, it's just as bad as the first one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But this is how it is, and these angels come to the shepherds because God's wanting to speak something through Luke, who's writing the account, through the shepherds who were there. They went off praising God, telling all the people of what had happened. But God wants to speak something to us, that Jesus is for everyone. Yeah. Jesus is for all people, menial jobs, the educated, those of low status, those of high status, those who are wealthy, those who are not. Jesus is for everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, who are these people that obtain peace with God? I mean, if we're going to get peace, then we need to be able to know how to obtain peace, right? So the Bible teaches us that God is pleased with the righteous. In Psalm 146, it says that he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He's big, God. Like, he's really big. He can do anything. He remains faithful forever. He's good as well. He's big and he's good. And he upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Because he's compassionate and he cares and he loves justice and mercy. The Lord sets prisoners free because he doesn't want anybody to be under bondage. And the Lord gives sight to the blind and the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. And you go, well, what about me? Psalm 147 says that his pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. Though these are not bad things. The Lord delights in those who fear him and who put their hope in his unfailing love. Yeah. Where are we putting our hope mm. this Christmas time? Are we putting our hope in things that we can get for other people and hope that they're kind of pleased with mm -hmm. our like, sacrifice and offering to them? Are we putting our hope in our friends and family on turning up and doing the right thing and making it or whatever it might be? Are we putting our hope in our children that they're going to bring a brand new future into the world, one free of war and conflict? Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, there are many rules we read them through the Torah. 613 of them. 613 <coughs> rules in order to be righteous before God. 
Before the Torah, Adam was given a rule, just one. Yeah. He messed it up. But there was just one rule. He was walking with God. And God just said, don't do that. And he went and did it, because, you know, he was trying to impress a girl. And so how many of us do things that we shouldn't do, because we're trying to impress somebody else? Anyway, I'm wrapping up now. Romans 5, chapter 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. We read, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, how do we get there? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like some of that. <coughs> through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. You get, you get peace through faith, through Jesus. It's this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given as a gift to us. Amen. You see, at just the right time, yeah. not too early, not too late, but at the right time, God speaks his message to his people. When we were still powerless, when you felt at your worst, yeah. When you was putting your hope and your trust in all the wrong things. When you didn't know where to turn to. For that relationship. For that finances. For that job. For that way of life that you're looking after, looking for. See, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. Very rarely... Will anyone die for a righteous person? No. For a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is good news. We are justified and made righteous through faith, trust, and a hope in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying, Jim, that's not a very Christmassy message, is it? That sounds more like Easter. <laughs> yeah. But this Jesus who died for us had to be given to us. Yes. In the first place. Yeah. Sent from heaven to earth, as Ian said, wrapped in the guise of mankind so that he might fulfill and satisfy the law of the Old Testament, that righteousness might be made for us through him, through his sacrifice. It's because of him, Jesus, that we have favour with God. And it's through Jesus that we can experience peace. His peace. And this peace is with God and from God for each other. Yeah. It's a peace that we can have in that vertical trajectory, isn't it? We can have peace with God. But we can also have peace with one another because of what Jesus did. Because of what Jesus came to do. Yeah. And no, God's peace isn't for everyone. Although it is available for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. His peace is upon those his favour rests. We get his favour by the righteousness of living through Jesus. And if we don't have this relationship with Jesus and our Heavenly Father, if we don't have that faith, then God's peace is not for us. He won't rest upon us. He won't stay amongst us. He won't have peace with our Heavenly Father and with one another. It's for those who trust Him. 
the one who we are celebrating this morning, the one who we celebrate every Sunday, the one who we celebrate daily. For his mercies are new every day. Jesus isn't just for Christmas. Yeah, come on. Jesus is for life. And he gives abundant life. For so, if you wish to be a part of the faithful, to be a part of the righteous, and receive God's peace and favour upon your life, it's available to you. You can accept it today. Come and speak to me, Pastor Tony and Ruth, after the service. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to see you know the peace of God in your own life. Yeah, amen. So, I'm going to leave it there. I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to spend some time. I'd love to pray for you, pray with you. But above all, I pray the peace of God be upon you this Christmas time. Amen. We're going to sing. So come on, let's stand, all ye faithful.